These boots are made out of kangaroo leather, but kangaroo with a C, because they're also Italian. Believe it or not, at one point in time, one of the most important features on a pair of high-end football boots was overall quality. And one of the things that told you that you were buying a quality product was if the boots were made in Italy. This was the case with popular brands like Lotto and Diodora at the time. Even at one point in time, all of Nike's top end boots were also made in Italy. And what I have right here is a boot that is made in Italy and is quite possibly the most Italian pair of football boots that money can buy right now. And yes, I'm doing this on purpose. It is the Pentafolo Doro Super Leggera 2.0 Kangaroo Nero. I think I said that right. This being the second generation in their Super Legera series, the first attempt actually being pretty good in a lot of ways, but it did have some issues in regards to fit and overall comfort. This I think is improved in a lot of ways. And I wanna go over all of the details of this boot in today's video, because despite being made in Italy, despite having a very handmade quality to them, they only retail for $230, which is quite a bit less than a lot of the most desirable top end boots out there these days. But of course the question remains, are they worth it and how do they stack up to other options out there? We're gonna cover all of that in this video as well as take a look at how they fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around, watch the entire review. And if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. Where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $230 retail price in all black or all white because there are two colorways. On the topic of quality, I think this is the best quality box in the business right now. You can see it is all black in color with the Italian flag stripe, the Super Leggera branding, and then the gold Pantofolo Doro detailing on either side. It's got this really huge lid. Unfortunately, they don't include any extras, and I think this is interesting as well. Some of you guys wanna see it. Here's a look at the label and all the information that it offers. Quick history lesson for those that don't know, Pantofolo Doro is not a brand new company. In fact, they're one of the oldest football boot manufacturers still in the industry. Starting the brand, I believe in the 1800s, but I could be wrong on that. I will fact check myself as I'm editing this video, but they've been around for a very long time and have more or less stuck to handmade in Italy, very traditional kind of old school, I guess you could say, football boots. But this new Super Leggera series is their attempt at making something for the modern day footballer. And quite honestly, they've done a good job but it's definitely a boot that isn't without its quirks in comparison to pretty much everything else out there. The upper is still made entirely out of kangaroo leather, which is not necessarily the norm for Pantafolo Doro. Being an Italian-based company, sourcing most of their materials, especially in the early days from Italy, I don't know if you know this, but there are no kangaroos in Italy. So a lot of their boots, some of the best leather boots I've ever seen in my life, were actually made out of calf skin. These, however, are made out of kangaroo leather. I think mainly due to the fact that people just generally recognize kangaroo leather as being better, even though you can get calfskin that is just as nice. Either way, this is very different from the original Super Legera in terms of the stitching pattern that they've gone with, which now has this kind of almost chevron design running from toe to heel, which is almost in the opposite direction of what I think they should have done from a visual perspective. And this is a boot that I've kind of gone back and forth on that sometimes I think it looks great. Other times I think it's a little bit kind of chunky and ugly looking, but I've kind of come to the conclusion that I really like the old school look with very, very, very minimal branding. The only logos you'll find is the Pantafolo Doro logo that you can't really see here in like this gold flake on the tongue. Kind of an interesting quirk is the number nine that's embroidered right here on the tongue flap. That is actually the size of the boot. At least that's what I think because there's no other explanation as to why that is there and these are a size 9 US. And you'll also notice on the back of the heel, it does read super legera just embossed into the leather and the entire upper is made out of kangaroo leather. It's super soft. It's really, really nicely padded. So it's not as thin as pretty much any other leather boot out there right now, but the quality is on par, if not better than just about everything out there. Laces run down the middle and you can see it does have this kind of zigzag pattern, very similar to what Mizuno has done as well. to just help with keeping the laces as locked in as possible once you tie them tight rather than just straight up and down. The tongue is also made out of a padded leather material, the same leather you're gonna find across the rest of the boot. And then of course the boot does feature a low cut construction with an extended heel, which I'm personally not a huge fan of. It has this very kind of old school, 
almost squared back. I wish that was actually cut a little bit lower because I do find that this can cause a little bit of chafing during the break-in process. But either way, there's not a lot of structure to it. It's very, very soft leather. However, the look isn't the only thing that's old school here because unlike most modern leather boots, kangaroo leather or not, they don't really absorb that much water and they dry out much more quickly than they used to. That is not necessarily the case with this boot. The leather is heavily padded. The liner, while it has been updated in comparison to what Pantofoladoro has been doing for the last 20, 30, 40 years. I'm not even sure how long it's been at this point. It still is a liner material, basically like a nylon that does lock in a good amount of moisture. Now, this leather definitely will absorb. It's not to say that they'll feel really heavy once they absorb some water, but more so the fact that they take a longer time to dry than most other football boots will. So just keep that in mind when you're buying these. If you play in rain a lot, probably best to keep these for matches because they're gonna take a day or two to fully dry out. And part of that reason is also because of the liner, which is actually made out of a natural leather material, something that we never see on any modern football boots. And it is one of my main complaints of this boot, not because it doesn't look incredible, because I love it. You'll find that once you play in these and start to sweat, it actually does kind of make the leather look darker and you actually get to see physical wear through the liner, which I think looks great. Um, but there's really no padding back here, which is still an interesting decision by Pantofoladoro. It was the same case on the original Superleggera. In the case with a lot of their football boots, actually, there is an internal heel counter. It's very thin. It's not overly structured, but there is legitimately no padding other than this very, very thin leather, which means that depending on the shape of your heel, and I found for me it actually wasn't too bad because I have changed the shape on this 2.0 model, you can find some issues with rubbing and just some excess space and movement at the back of the heel. Because there is no extra padding, it can lead to some discomfort and blisters. Although for me, I didn't find it to be nearly as bad on this new version versus the old model, where I did think it was a significant issue, at least for me personally. And then as far as the insole is concerned, it is actually glued in, so I'm not gonna pull it out but it is a regular foam material with the standard kind of slightly textured liner that Pantofoladoro uses on all of their boots. It's far from fancy, but it gets the job done. Progettato in Italia. No clue what that means. Which brings us to the base, and if I haven't mentioned this already, the reason why this is called the Super Leggera, which is Italian for super light, is mainly because this is significantly lighter than pretty much all the other boots that Pantofoladoro makes, most of them being very old school. This being kind of a sprint frame-esque outsole with still a very traditional stud pattern, but it is in fact fairly lightweight, being made out of a new modern plastic material. It has really good flexibility to it, so it still maintains a very traditional sensation. This kind of feels like what you get on the Nike Premier 2, but lighter and just more rigid in general. It, it feels better quality. I have no major complaints here in regards to the sole plate, and you can even see at the side of the heel where you have the Pantofoladoro Signature 3 stars. It does have a little bit of a kind of a mini heel count on either side. Kind of not too far off the Phantom Venom and the Hyper Venom series, if I'm being completely honest. Um, and then as far as the stud pattern is concerned, it is their FG layout, which I believe is the only variant available on this particular product. Um, it works really nice. It is definitely usable on artificial grass, although keep in mind, as with any FG boot, if you do choose to use these on artificial grass, the durability will be kind of questionable. It's, it's really up in the air as far as how long they'll last at that point. But as an overall stud pattern for a traditional layout, it, it gets the job done. Which brings us to the weight. And given that this is the Super Legera, the weight is particularly important, especially given the fact that the original Super Legera in a size nine US weighed in at only six ounces, making it the lightest football boot on the market at the time that it came out and still lighter than pretty much any speed boot from any of the big brands that are currently available. The Super Legera 2.0, however, doesn't feel quite as light. It's one of the first things I noticed when I got to try the boots for the first time. Um, but we'll see exactly what they weigh. These being a size 9 US, keep that in mind. We'll throw them on the scale. And you can see that they weigh in at 6.6 .6 ounces, the equivalent of 187 grams, which is 0.6 ounces more than the original model. Obviously heavier is not an improvement, but I think they have made huge improvements in regards to the upper, both in regards to fit as well as overall responsiveness. This just has more structure to it because of the way that it's designed. So I'll take the extra weight for the better comfort and better overall performance. And even at 6.6 .6 ounces, it's still lighter than a Mercurial Vapor 13 Elite. It's lighter than any of the X Speed boots. It is still one of the lightest football boots on the market, even 
though it might not look like it. That is until they get wet, of course. So as you can see, I've swapped out the stock black laces, which look fine given that these are pretty much blackouts, but I've changed them for some black reflective SR4U replacement laces, which I think fit the overall super lightweight vibe really nicely. It has the reflective bits, but doesn't kill the blackout look, which I'm personally a big fan of. It's a great way of changing up the style of your boots in a very inexpensive way. So if you're interested in some laces, for yourself, the website to visit is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in some for yourself, be sure to go ahead and check that out. On feet, as the Pantofolodoro name would suggest, they feel like slippers. The leather is super soft, they're really padded, the boot as a whole is really flexible. And in comparison to pretty much any modern speed boot, these have a very unrestricted feel in that they're not really squeezing your feet but that's kind of what you expect from something with a full kangaroo leather upper which i think is why these boots are so comfortable these remind me a lot of a classic pair of copa mundials or a classic pair of made in japan mizuno morelia twos which is pretty much as big of a compliment you can give a pair of boots when it comes to overall comfort although again my complaint is that the heel doesn't have any extra padding, which means that unless your heel fits the shape of that heel counter perfectly, there can be a little bit of slippage and kind of extra volume in that area of the foot that can result in some slippage, potential blisters. But for me, it seems to fit okay. But again, that's gonna vary from person to person, something I do wish they would change on this particular boot. Keep in mind from a stretch standpoint, because they are entirely made out of kangaroo leather, simply reinforced by a liner and some stitching, these are gonna stretch a significant amount as you break them in. So you want them to fit very snug out of the box. I would not recommend buying these with a ton of extra groin room because overstretching will inevitably be an issue. From a width standpoint, they have some decent width to them. I think if you do have wide feet, these will fit you comfortably, especially after some wear time once they have stretched. And they do have a little bit more volume through the toe box area than I would like, but in general, the shape is definitely better than the original Super Legera, and they seem to fit quite well in general um, in terms of wrapping your foot pretty closely. As far as sizing is concerned, these are a size 9 US rather than my usual size 9.5, and the reason why I went a half size smaller is mainly because Pantofola Dora boots historically have always run a little bit bigger. These are no different. So if you're looking to order a pair for yourself, I would personally recommend going half a size down in order to achieve the best possible fit. They might feel a little bit snugger than you like out of the box, but keep in mind they are going to stretch. Half a size down is definitely the way to go. Also, wow, they are so light. As I've expressed on this channel before, I'm a huge fan of old school football boots and the Pantofola Doro brand in general is one that I'm a huge fan of, but realistically, their boots are more of experienced products rather than legitimate performance products. Playing in a pair of Lazzarinis is really fun, but it's not something that you necessarily want to do every single time that you play. In the case of the Superleggera 2.0, however, I think that this is the first Pantofolodoro product that I think can be taken seriously as a modern day football boot. And that's not to say that the Super Legera 2.0 isn't without its quirks because for a speed boot, it's definitely heavily padded and a little bit on the bulky side. It is nowhere near as responsive as most speed boots out there. And like I said, they do absorb a decent amount of water and take a little bit longer to dry than pretty much anything else. But what it does have going for it is an incredible touch on the ball, great comfort once broken in. The sole plate and stud pattern is actually really good as well and the overall package is extremely lightweight it's one of the lightest boots on the market right now so it's not a very well-rounded product in terms of all of the performance categories but what it does do well it does extremely well i think what it comes down to is that the super legera 2.0 is a football boot with a personality it is compromised in a lot of ways but those compromises are ultimately what makes it a very unique and special experience to play in. So it's a speed boot that is unlike anything else. I can't really compare it to a Vapor. I can't compare it to an X. I guess you could kind of compare it to Made in Japan Mizuno Morelia Neo 2, but not really. It's a unique standalone product that if what I described sounds good to you, 
I think you're gonna have an enjoyable experience with them. Anyways, guys, that's it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website. Where you'll find buy it now links for the black colorway as well as the white colorway with SR4U coupon codes to pick them up below their normal $230 retail price. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked to down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.